All right, I think we're good to go. Whoops. That one. Wrong one. All right. Continuing our reading of Dante. Sure everything's good. All right. Canto 13. The Wood of Thorns, the Harpies, the Violent Against Themselves, Suicides, Pier della Vigna, Lano and Jacopo da Sant'Andrea. Not yet had Nessus reached the other side when we had put ourselves within a wood that was not marked by any path whatever. Not foliage green, but of a dusky color, not branches smooth, but gnarled and intertangled. Not apple trees were there, but thorns with poison. Such tangled thickets have not, nor so dense, those savage wild beasts that in hatred hold twixt Cecina and Coronetto the tilled places. There do the hideous harpies make their nests, who chase the Trojans from the Strophides with sad announcement of impending doom. <clears throat> Broad wings have they, and necks and faces human, and feet with claws, and their great bellies fledged. They make laments upon the wondrous trees. And the good master, ere thou enter farther, know that thou art within the second round, thus he began to say, and shalt be till thou comest out upon the horrible sand. Therefore look well around, and thou shalt see things that will credence give unto my speech. I heard on all sides lamentations uttered, in person none beheld I who might make them, whence, utterly bewildered, I stood still. I think he thought that I perhaps might think so many voices issued through those trunks from people who concealed themselves from us. Therefore the master said, If thou break off some little spray from any of these trees, the thoughts thou hast will wholly be made vain. Then stretched I forth my hand a little forward, and plucked a branchlet off from a great thorn. And the trunk cried, Why dost thou mangle me? After it had become embrowned with blood, I, it recommenced its cry, Why dost thou rend me? Hast thou no spirit of pity whatsoever? Men once were, and now are changed to trees. Indeed, thy hand should be more pitiful, even if the souls of serpents we had been. As out of a green brand that is on fire at one of the ends, and from the other drips and hisses with the wind that is escaping, so from the splinter issued forth together both words and blood, whereat I let the tip fall, and stood like a man who is afraid. Had he been able sooner to believe, my sage made answer, O thou wounded soul, what only in my verses he has seen. Not upon thee had the stretch forth his hand, had he stretched forth his hand, whereas the thing incredible has caused me, to put him to an act which grieveth me. But tell him who thou wast, so that by way of some amends thy fame he may refresh up, up in the world, to, to which he can return. And the trunk said, So thy sweet words allure me, I cannot, be si cannot silent be, and you be vexed not, that I a little to discourse am tempted. I am the one who both keys had in keeping of Frederick's heart, and turned them to and fro, so softly in unlocking and in locking, that from his secrets most men I withheld, fidelity I bore the glorious office so great, I lost thereby my sleep and pulses. The courtesan who never from the dwelling of Caesar turned aside her strumpet eyes, death universal in the vice of courts. <clears throat> Inflamed against me all the other minds, and they, inflamed, did so inflame Augustus, that my glad honors turned to dismal mornings. My spirit, in disdainful exultation, thinking by dying to escape disdain, made me unjust against myself the just. I, by the roots unwanted of this wood, do swear to you that never broke I faith unto my Lord, who was so worthy of honor. And to the world, if one of you return, let him my memory comfort, which is lying, still prostrate from the blow that envy dealt it. Wait a while, and then, 
Since he is silent, the poet said to me, lose not the time, but speak and question him, if more may please thee. Went I to him, do thou again inquire concerning what thou thinkest will satisfy me, for I cannot, such pity is in my heart. Therefore he re recommenced, so may the man do for thee freely what thy speech implores, spirit incarcerate, again be pleased. To tell us in what way the soul is bound, within these knots, and tell us, if thou canst, if any from such members ever is freed. Then blew the trunk amain, and afterward the wind was into such a voice converted, with brevity shall be replied to you. When the exasperated soul abandons the body whence it rent itself away, Minos consigns it to the seventh abyss. It falls into the forest, and no part it is chosen for it, but where fortune hurls it, there like a grain of spelt it germinates. It springs a sapling and a forest tree. The harpies, feeding then upon its leaves, do pain create, and for the pain an outlet. Like others for our spoils shall we return, but not that any one may then revest, for tis not just to have what one casts off. Here we shall drag them, and along the dismal forest our bodies shall suspended be, each to the thorn of his molested shade. We were attentive still unto the trunk, thinking that more it yet might wish to tell us, when by a tumult we were overtaken. In the same way as he is who perceives the boar and chase approaching to his stand, who hears the crashing of the beasts and branches, and to behold, Upon our left hand side, naked and scratched, fleeing so furiously, that of the forest every fan they broke. He who was in adv advance, now help, death, help, and the other one, who seemed to lag much, was shouting, Lano, we're not so alert. Those legs of thine at jousting of the topo. And then, perchance, because his breath was failing, he grouped himself together with a bush. Behind them was the forest full of black, she mastiffs ravenous, and swift of foot as greyhounds, who are issuing from the chain. On him who had crouched down they set their teeth, and him they lacerated piece by piece. Thereafter bore away those aching members. Thereat my escort took me by the hand, and led me to the bush that all in vain was weeping from its bloody lacerations. O oh, Jacopo, it said, of Saint Andrea, what helped it thee of me to make a screen? What blame have I in thy nefarious life? When near him had the master stayed his steps, he said, Who wast thou, that through wounds so many art blowing out with blood thy dolorous speech? And he to us, O souls, that hither come to look upon the shameful massacre that has so rent away from me my leaves, gather them up beneath the dismal bush, I of the city was which to the Baptist changed its, its first patron, wherefore he for this, forever with his art will make it sad. And were it not that on the pass of Arno some glimpses of him are remaining still. Those citizens who afterwards rebuilt it, upon the ashes left by Attila, in vain had caused their labor to be done. Of my own house I made myself a gibbet. Canto 14. The sand waste and the rain of fire, the violent against God, Capanius, the statue of time, and the four infernal rivers. <clears throat> because the charity of my native place constrained me, gathered I the scattered leaves and gave them back to him who now is hoarse. Then came we to the confine, where disparted the second round is from the third, and where a horrible form of justice is beheld. Clearly to manifest these novel things, I say that we arrived upon a plain, which from its bed rejecteth every plant. The dolorous forest is a garland to it, all round about as the sad moat to that, there close upon the edge we stayed our feet. The soil was of an arid and thick sand, not of another fashion made than that, 
which by the feet of Cato once was pressed. Vengeance of God, O oh how much oughtest thou by each one to be dreaded, who doth read that which was manifest unto mine eyes. Of naked souls beheld I many herds, who all were weeping very miserably, and over them seemed set a law diverse. Supine upon the ground some folk were lying, and some were sitting all drawn up together, and others went about continually. Those who were going round were far the more, and those were less who lay down to their torment, but had their tongues more loose to lamentation. Over all the sand waste, which a gradual fall, with a gradual fall, were raining down dilated flakes of fire, as of the snow on Alp without a wind. As Alexander, in those torrid parts of India, beheld upon his host flames fall and broken till they reached the ground, whence he provided with his phalanxes to trample down the soil, because the vapor better extinguished was while, while it was single. Thus was descending the eternal heat, whereby the sand was set on fire, like tinder beneath the steel, for doubling of the dole. Without repose forever was the dance of miserable hands, now there, now here, shaking away from off them the fresh gleeds. Master, began I, thou who overcomest all things except the demons dire, that issued against us at the entrance of the gate. Who is that mighty one who seems to heed not the fire, and lieth lowering and disdainful, so that the rain seems not to ripen him? And he himself, who had become aware that I was questioning my guide about him, cried, Such as I was living, am I dead? If Jove should weary out his smith, from whom he seized in anger the sharp thunderbolt, wherewith upon the last day I was smitten. And if he wearied out by turns the others in Mongibello at the swarthy forge, vociferating, Help, good Vulcan, help! Even as he did there at the fight of Flegra, and shot his bolts at me with all his might, he would not have thereby a joyous vengeance. Then did my leader speak with such great force that I had never heard him speak so loud, O Capanius, in that is not extinguished, thine arrogance thou punished art the more. Not any torment, saving thine own rage, would be unto thy fury pain complete. Then he turned round to me with better lip, saying, One of the seven kings was he who thieves besieged, and held, and seemed to hold, God in disdain, and little seems to prize him. But, as I said to him, his own despites are for his breast the fittest ornaments. Now follow me, and mind thou do not place as yet thy feet upon the burning sand, but always keep them close unto the wood. Speaking no word, we came to where there gushes forth from the wood a little rivulet, whose redness makes my hair still stand on end. As from the bulacame springs the brooklet, the sinful woman laid her share among them, so downward through the sand it went its way. The bottom of it, and both sloping banks, were made of stone, and the margins at the side, whence I perceived that there the passage was. And all the rest which I have shown to thee, since we have entered in within the gate, whose threshold unto no one is denied. Nothing has been discovered by thine eyes, so notable as in the pre is the present river which all of the little flames above it quenches. These words were of my leader, whence I prayed him that he would give me largesse of the food, for which he had given me largesse of desire. In the mid-sea there sits a wasted land, he said, said he there afterward, whose name is Crete, under whose king the world of old was chased. There is a mountain there that once was glad with waters and with leaves, which was called Ida, now tis deserted as a thing worn out. Rhea once chose it for the faithful cradle of her own son, and to conceal him better. Whenever he cried, she there had clamors made. A grand old man stands in the mount erect, who holds his shoulders turned towards Damietta, and looks at Rome as if it were his mirror. His head is fashioned of refined gold, and of pure silver are the arms and breast. Then he is brass as far down as the fork. 
From that point downward all is chosen iron, save that the right foot is of kiln-baked clay, and more he stands on that than on the other. Each part, except the gold, is by a fissure asunder cleft, that dripping is with tears, which gathered together per perforate the ca that cavern. From rock to rock they fall into this valley, Acheron, Styx, and Phlegathon they form, then downward go along this narrow sluice, unto the point where it is no more descending, they form Cacitus. What that pool may be, thou shalt behold, so here tis not narrated. And I to him, if so the present runnel doth take its rise in this way from our world, why only on this verge appear it to us? And he to me, Thou knowest the place is round, and notwithstanding thou hast journeyed far, still to the left descending to the bottom. Thou hast not yet through all the circle turned. Therefore, if something new appear to us, it should not bring amazement to thy face. And I again, Master, where shall be found Leth and Phlegathon, for of one thou art silent? And sayest the other of this rain is made. In all thy questions truly thou dost please me, replied he, but the boiling of the red water might well solve one of them thou makest. Thou shalt see Leth, but outside this moat, there where soul, the souls repair to lave themselves, when sin repented of has been removed. Then said he, It is time now to abandon the wood. Take heed that thou come after me. Away the margins make that are not burning, and over them all vapors are extinguished. Canto 15 The Violent Against Nature, Brunetto Latini now bears us onward one of the hard margins, and so the brooklet's mist, mist overshadows it. From fire it saves the water and the dikes. Even as the Flemings twixt cad sand and bruges, fearing the flood that towards them hurls itself, their bulwarks built to put the sea to flight. And as the Paduans along the Brenta to guard their villas and their villages, or even Chiarentana feel the heat. In such similitude, had those been made, albeit not so lofty nor so thick, whoever he might be, the master made them. Now were we from the forest so remote, I could not have discovered where it was, even if backward I had turned myself. <clears throat> when we a company of souls encountered, who came beside the dike and every one gazed at us, as at evening we are wont, to eye each other under a new moon, and so towards us sharpened they their brows as an old tailor at the needle's eye. Thus scrutinized by such a family, by someone I was recognized, who seized my garment's hem and cried out, What a marvel! And I, when he stretched forth his arm to me, on his baked aspect fastened so mine eyes that the scorched countenance prevented not his recognition by my intellect. And bowing down my face unto his own, I made reply, are you here, Sir Brunetto? And he, May it not displease thee, O my son, If a brief space with thee, Brunetto Latini, Backward return and let the trail go on. <clears throat> I said to him, With all my power I ask it, And if you wish me to sit down with you, I will, if he please, for I go with him. O son, he said, Whoever of this herd a moment stops, lies then a hundred years, nor fans himself when smiteth, smiteth him the fire. Therefore go on, I at thy skirts will come, and afterward will I rejoin my band, which goes lamenting its eternal doom. I did not dare to go down from the road level to walk with him, but my head bowed, I held as one who goeth reverently. And he began. What fortune or what fate before the last day leadeth thee down here? And who is this that showeth thee the way? Up there above us in the life serene, I answered him. I lost me in a valley, or ever yet my age had been completed. But yester morn I turned my back upon it. This one appeared to me, returning thither, 
and homeward leadeth me along this road. Homeward. And he to me, if thou thy star do follow, thou canst not fail thee of a glorious port, if will I judged in the life beautiful. And if I had not died so prematurely, seeing heaven thus benighted unto thee, I would have given thee comfort in the work. <clears throat> but that ungrateful and malignant people, which of old time from Fessel descended, and smack still of the mountains and the granite, will make itself, for thy good deeds, thy foe. And it is right, for among crabbed swords it ill befits the sweet fig to bear fruit. Old rumor in the world proclaims them blind, a people avaricious, envious, proud. Take heed that of their customs thou do cleanse thee. Thy fortune so much honor doth reserve thee, one party and the other shall be hungry for thee, but far from the goat shall be the grass. Their litter, less let, uh, their litter let the beasts of Fessel make of themselves, nor let them touch the plant, if any still upon their dunghill rise, in which may yet revive the consecrated seed of those Romans, who remain there when the nest of such great malice it became. In my entreaty, hold... If my entreaty wholly were fulfilled, replied I to him, not yet would you be in banishment from the from human nature placed. For in my mind is fixed, and touches now my heart the dear and good paternal image of you, when in the world from hour to hour you taught me how a man becomes eternal, and how much I am grateful, while I live be who's that in my language be discerned. What you narrate of my career I write, and keep it to be glossed with other texts by a lady who can do it if I reach her. This much will I have manifest to you, provided that my conscience do not chide me, for who whatsoever fortune I am ready. Such Hansel is now not new unto mine ears. Therefore let fortune turn her wheel around as it may please her, and the churl his mattock. My master thereupon on his right cheek, did backward turn himself, and looked at me, then said, He listeneth well who noteth it, nor speaking less on that account, I go with Sir Brunetto, and I ask who are his most known and most eminent companions, and he to me. To know of some is well, of others it was were laudable to be silent, for short would be the time for so much speech. Know them in some, that all of them were clerks, and men of letters great and of great fame, and the world tainted with the selfsame sin. Persian goes yonder with that wretched crowd, and Francis of Acorza, Acorso, and thou hadst seen there, if thou hadst had a hankering for such scurf, that one who by the servant of the servants from Arno was transferred to Bacchilione, where he has left his sin-excited nerves. More would I say, but coming and discoursing can be no longer, for that I behold new smoke uprising yonder from the sand. A people comes with whom I may not be, commended unto thee by be my tessero, in which I still live, and no more I ask. Then he turned round, and seemed to be of those who at Verona run for the green mantle across the plain, and seem to be among them, the one who wins, and not the one who loses. Canto 16 Guido Guerra, Aldo Brandi, and Rustacucci, Cataract of the River of Blood. Now was I where was was heard the re reverberation of water falling into the next round, like to that humming which the beehives make, when shadows three together started forth, running from out a company that passed beneath the reign of the sharp martyrdom. Towards us came they, and each one cried out, Stop, thou, for by thy garb to us thou seemest to be someone of our depraved city. Ah me, what wounds I saw upon their limbs, recent and ancient by, flame, by the flames burnt in, 
It pains me still but to remember it. Unto their cries my teacher paused attentive. He turned his face towards me. And now wait, he said. To these we should be courteous. And if it were not for the fire that darts, the nature of this region I should say, that haste were more becoming thee than them. As soon as we stood still, they rec recommenced the old refrain, and when they overtook us, formed of themselves a wheel, all three of them. As champions stripped and oiled are wont to do, watching for their advantage and their hold, before they come to blows and thrust between them. Thus, wheeling round, did every one his visage direct to me, so that in opposite wise his neck and feet continual journey made. And, if the misery of this soft place bring in disdain ourselves and our entreaties, began one, and our aspect, aspect black and blistered, let the renown of us thy mind incline to tell us who thou art, who thus securely thy living feet dost move along through hell. He in whose footprints thou dost see me treading, naked and skinless thou, though he now may go, was of a greater rank than thou dost think. He was the grandson of the good Gualdrada. His name was Guido Guerra, and in life much did he with his wisdom and his sword. The other, who, who close by me, treads the sand, Tagio eh, Aldobrandi is, whose fame above there in the world should be should welcome be. And I, who with them on the cross am placed, Dracopo Rustacucci was, and truly, my savage wife, more than aught else, doth harm me. Could I have been protected from the fire, Below I should have thrown myself among them, and think the teacher would have suffered it. But as I should have burned and baked myself, my terror overmastered my goodwill, which may, made me greedy of embracing them. Then I began, Sorrow and not disdain did your condition fix within me so, that tardily it wholly is stripped off. As soon as this my lord said unto me, words, on account of which I thought within me, that people such as you are, are were approaching. I of your city am, and evermore, your labors and your honorable names I with affection have retraced and heard. I leave the gall and go for the sweet fruits promised to me by the voracious leader. But to the center first I needs must plunge. So may the soul for a long while conduct those limbs of thine, did he make answer then? And so may thy renown shine after thee, valor and courtesy, say if they dwell within our city, as they used to, to do, or if they wholly have gone out of it. For Guglielmo Borsir, who is in torment with us of late, and goes there with his comrades, doth greatly mortify us with his words. The new inhabitants and the sudden gains Pride and extravagance have in thee engendered, Florence, so that thou weepest there, thereat already. In this wise I exclaimed with face uplifted, and the three, taking that for my reply, looked at each other as one looks at truth. If other times so little it doth cost thee, replied they all, to satisfy another, happy art thou, thus speaking at thy will. Therefore, if thou escape from these dark places, and come to re-behold the beauteous stars, when it shall pleasure thee to say, I was, see that thou speak of us unto the people. Then they broke up the wheel, and in their flight it seemed as if their agile legs were wings. Not an amen could possibly be said so rapidly as they had disappeared, wherefore the master deemed best to depart. I followed him, and little had we gone, before the sound of water was so near us, that speaking we should hardly have been heard. Even, a, even as that stream which holdeth its own course, the first from Monte Vesso towards the east, upon the left-hand slope of Apennine, which is above called Ac Aquachetta, ere it down the descend descendeth into its low bed, and at Forli is vacant of that name reverberates there above San Benedetto from Alps 
by falling at a single leap, where for a thousand there were room enough. Thus downward from a bank precipitate, we fa found resounding that dark tented water, so that it soon the ear would have offended. I had a cord around about me girt, and therewithal I, I Willem had designed to take the panther with the painted skin. After this had all from me unloosed, as my conductor had commanded me, I reached it to him, gathered up and coiled, whereat he turned himself to the right side, and at a little distance from the verge he cast it down into the deep abyss. It must needs be some novelty respond, I said within myself, to the new signal the mas master with his eye is following so. Ah me, how very cautious men should be with those who do who not alone behold the act, but with their wisdom look into the thoughts. He said to me, Soon there will upward come what I await, and what thy thought is dreaming must soon reveal itself unto thy sight. I to the truth which has the face of falsehood. A man should close his lips as far as may be, because without his fault it caused shame. But here I cannot, and, reader, by the notes of this my comedy to thee I swear, so may, so may they not be void of lasting favor. Athwart that dense and darksome atmosphere, I saw a figure swimming upward come, marvelous until every steadfast heart. Even as he returns who goeth down, sometimes to clear an anchor, which has grappled reef or aught else that in the sea is hidden, who upward stretches and draws in his feet. All right. Continue that tomorrow, maybe. And I'll be right back.